Hello, I'm Holly, and this is Kat. Hello. <laughs> and this is Bones Characters, and would I date them? As you can see, I am an expert on the show. Got my own Jeffersonian lab coat and everything. So let's just dive in. Here are all the Bones characters that are being considered for this. Dr. Brennan, Booth, Cam, Angela, Hodgen, Sweet, Zach, uh, Sweets, Zach, Aubrey, Clark, Vincent, Wendell, Fisher, Arisu, Daisy, Finn, Oliver, Fuentes, Jessica, Agent Sol Sully, Agent Parada, Hacker, Agent Shaw, Karen, Russ, Brennan, Deard, Booth, Michelle, Welton, Howard Epps, Heather Taffet, Gormagon, Jacob, Brodsky, Pallant, Stephanie McNamara, Roger, Ro uh, blah, 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 Roger Flinder, Puppeteer, Mark Kovac, Hannah Burley, Dr. Lindner, Rebecca Stinson, Amy Morton, Grayson Barasa, Ian Wexler, Kate Pritchard, Agent Sparling, Aldo Clemens, Danny Beck, Avalon, Padme Delage, and Goodman. That's a lot. Jesus. The show went on for 12 years, so this makes sense. Uh, reasons I would exclude a character. They're either way too old, they're way too young, uh, I barely remember them, or I just don't feel like making an entire slide about them. You can assume that any characters not mentioned are a no. I would not date them. Other disclaimers. This is my opinion. I would love to see other people's. Uh, but it's not a debate. It's a share. Alright. Points of consideration. Do I find them attractive? Do I think they're intelligent? Are they emotionally intelligent? Do I find them funny? Are they relatable to me? And do we share similar worldviews? That was a killer for this show because it's a cop show. <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah. All right, well, let's dive in. First up, Dr. Brennan. An easy yes. Brennan is attractive. She's intelligent. She's emotionally intelligent. She's funny. She's relatable. And good God, sorry. Rewind. Good God, is she relatable. Extremely relatable. And also, we share a lot of similar worldviews. There's every now and then she says something, and I'm like, hmm, I didn't like that. But for the most part, 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10 on worldviews. Um, and you can see the rest of the numbers there. Uh, her character arc, I think, is fantastic. I love that she grows, but doesn't, like, change things that are, like, part of her core. Um, I like that... At the very beginning of the show, she wasn't religious, and she maintained that throughout the whole show. That is an example, um, one of many things that she just simply didn't waver on that I felt that a show might have had a character do. But they didn't. They let her be her. Then we have Booth. Booth is a no. Now, let's be clear. This man is extremely attractive. 10 out of 10. I think he's extremely intelligent. Um, his emotional intelligence, I think, is pretty decent, although at some times he expresses things in the worst way possible. Um, I th find him to be pretty amusing. Uh, but relatable? No. And our worldviews are way too different. Um, I really love his socks. And yeah, as mentioned, he gets better in the show, but he never gets to a point where I think I would date him. Um, he's very... Like, and and it, he's very nationalistic and in, in kind of a, a, almost a blind way. And, you know, at points he challenges that in himself as well, which I think is good. But I think he, he's, at the end of the day, he's always a cop. Uh, so, no. Cam is, for the same reason, also, unfortunately, a no. Um, I think she's extremely attractive, insanely intelligent. Um, I like her emotional intelligence, Prior to becoming a mom, once she becomes a mom, it's like her ability to navigate a situation just kind of goes out the fucking window for some reason. Um, I think she's decently funny and decently relatable, but her worldviews are sometimes just really skewed. Um, one thing that stands out was like this conversation that she had with Hodgins, where Hodgins was talking about how, you know, the the justice system is extremely fucked and the fact that, you know, we have, you know, prisons where we essentially just have people enslaved. And she was in favor of prisons and Hodgins called her on and was like, seriously? Like, do you understand, like, how how that's built against, like, the the entire, like, community of black Americans? And it just, like, it was so strange that even with that, she just didn't care. Um, so, yeah. She's a no. 
um, for that. And then the being way too overly protective mom in to a point where it's like bad. But I do like her. I just wouldn't date her. Next, Angela. Angela is a yes. She's extremely attractive, very intelligent. She's the computer nerd. She has incredible emotional intelligence pretty much throughout the whole show. Um, she, I feel like, is one of the, despite being kind of the most chaotic character in, like, the first season, she is, I feel like, the rock throughout the whole show. When everybody's being a dick, she's like, hey, maybe you could be a good and intelligent person instead. And I appreciate that. Um, she doesn't make me laugh very often, though, so I don't really think she's super funny. Um, and I don't really relate to her very much, despite the fact that she's, like, a computer person. I think that, like, personally, other than that, I don't really relate to her. But similar worldviews, I think, for the most part, um, a line, 7 out of 10. I think she's very self-aware. Um, she's really good at adapting to various communication styles, as can be seen by how she talks to Bones and then everybody else. Um, deeply understands the fluidity of human emotions, and I appreciate that. Yeah, she gives a lot of, like, mom friend vibes. Yeah. Especially when it comes to Bones and Booth. Yeah. I, <laughs> we've, so we rewatched the entire show recently, and then we laughed ourselves and started back at season one, and, and she's definitely doing that, like, I'm going to intervene on your behalf, Brennan, and it's like, oh, that that's annoying, don't do that, but also, you know, that's part of her character, and, you know, she has her own character growth, but, like, yeah, definitely mom friend. <laughs> yeah. See, for me, uh, Angela was a little bit more relatable because I also, uh, mom friend, but, like, I also thought it was annoying that she would be like, if you're not going to say anything, I'm going to say something, because, like, that's crossing a boundary. Yeah. So. Yeah. She's, yeah, I would say that would be, like, her one, her one point docked on emotional intelligence is that sometimes she does step over boundaries, but, yeah, I can see how you guys relate. That makes sense. Complete sense. Hodgins. Big yes. Big yes. Um, so, attractive, 8 out of 10, um, but when there's, like, so, I think it's in season 10 or 11 in that somewhere in that area he has like a faux hawk where like you can't really tell unless you're looking but like just the the sides are sh are short they're not shaved or anything they're probably as short as they are in this picture but then the back is just slightly longer and he's got like a little like tail like a hair tail thing it's just i don't know man it's, i know exactly what you're talking about because i love him it was such an attractive haircut i mean he just jumped straight to a 10 out of 10 it was like every time he was on screen in this most recent watch through, me and Blake were just like, it's just such great hair. <laughs> um, obviously, I think he's extremely intelligent. Uh, emotional intelligence, 6 out of 10. He got docked a lot of points for essentially being um, kind of an en entitled baby, uh, for lack of better words. Um, and as mentioned down there, like he's got this, like, I don't need to rest attitude, which is extremely fucking annoying. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, he, his, like, he doesn't have a lot of self-control over his emotions, which unfortunately I find to be very relatable, but like, I like his worldviews, um, worldviews, 10 out of, or 9 out of 10 for him. Like, I, I, I'm sure there was something that he said that I didn't like, but, oh, I think probably he got docked for being, for being, uh, like, extremely rich and entitled. Um. Eat the rich. Yeah, like, for the most part, he actually does pretty well with it, like, and mm -hmm. as Sweets mentioned at some point in season four, like, you don't have to work. You're independently wealthy. But you do work, and that's cool. Like, that's very respectable. Um, but even then, still, there's just moments where he just simply, bl like, blasts right through rules and, you know, things that people should do because he wants to do something different, and he's not really used to having barriers to that, so... But then again, also props to him for essentially ditching his fortune when it was recovered later. So, yeet. But Hodgins overall, big yes. Really like that guy. Um, I hate his... Oh, hold on. We're going to stop right here and mention um, big-ass bone spoilers. That if you haven't seen the entire show, just stop watching this right now. Um, because from right now, I'm about to get into some shit. Okay. From, from when Hodgins gets into like right after his like his wheelchair thing firstly the whole wheelchair situation like when he first got into a wheelchair was a little frustrating because it was like if you would just rest you might be okay but he wouldn't um but the really frustrating part when he became an absolute ass particularly to angela um 
was just so fucking horrible to watch, and I absolutely hated him during that time, and I'm glad it was short-lived. Mm. He got better. Um, he did, yeah. But yeah, I also... I also was really frustrated with him during that because he is my favorite character in Bones. Mm. Um, and and that. yeah, when he was doing that, I was like, I would kick your ass. I yeah. The first time I watched that, I at some point thought I, I wish that the character would die off, which is super harsh. I think also Blake mentioned that it felt like character assass- assassination to them. I actually didn't, Mm -hmm. I didn't feel like that. I think that, um, I think it's the first real, like, real actual hardship Hodgins ever faced, which, you know, Blake came up with a list of things that he'd faced before. And, you know, the thought was like, none of these were actually ever really hardships for him. And at least not for very long. Every, Mm -hmm. everything that he came up against was very quickly solved. Um, His... Like, he's never had to deal with anything harder than just his own emotions. Mm -hmm. Um, Because he has money to cover everything. And even the fact that he ended up in a wheelchair, like, that is very expensive. And immediately, the very next day, he had an ass ton of, like, you know, physical therapy equipment being delivered to his house. Like, he can afford that. Um, You know, learning that he has a brother who has to be institutionalized, he could afford that, too. And it's like, the emotional, you know, pain is still there because he's still a person. But I think it's the first time that he ever had a real hardship that he couldn't just come back from. So even when he lost his fortune, he just re-earned it by inventing hot sauce and then that floor padding. Like, Mm -hmm. he's always been rich. Even when he lost his fortune, he still had a Jeffersonian job, which you can't convince me he doesn't make six figures with that doctorate. Like, he's never been poor in his life. Even when he, like, he lost his fortune and that was, like, his big hardship. But he didn't, he was never poor. Like, he had consistent income the whole time. So, um, yeah, but you know, when he lost his legs and his ability to, or lost his ability to use his legs, that was like something that he couldn't just buy back. He couldn't just snap his fingers and fix that. He had to actually deal with it. So, but anyway, still a yes. Um, sweets. Holy shit. Yes. 10 out of 10 attractive. Eight out of 10 intelligence. I think it's super smart. Uh, emotional intelligence overall, I'd put him at seven out of 10. <clears throat> There's some scenes in like early sweets era where it's like oh that's really silly or annoying but also he's very young uh in that in that time i think he's 23 when he answers the show so um i think he's decently funny but he doesn't like crack me up or anything i think he's pretty relatable just like kind of as his personality not so much like what he's been through in his specific like life and situation similar worldviews yeah maybe five out of ten i i like that he's willing to dive into like the human mind he is also a cop um (laughs) so he handles everyone treating him like a child very well um which is the almost the entirety of his existence on the show he's getting treated like a child it's extremely annoying um his him and daisy have horrible shit boundaries between their personal life and their work lives and i hate that i wish they would fix that no one should ever have to like walk into an office and see two people having sex in there that's real real wonky um zach big yes uh i think he's very attractive i've obviously the most intelligent person on the entire show um emotional intelligence pretty low i think he's very funny and i find him very relatable um as far as world views we don't really see all that much um but like of what we do see i think it's okay um but yeah it's decent up until the gormagon thing but um i like that he is and again oh boy spoiler alert i like that he he gets a chance to redeem himself at the very end um not a fan of his singing i didn't like it because he was singing opera and i'm not really yeah valid yeah valid but would date would date (laughs) um aubrey yes God, yes. I think Aubrey is adorable. 10 out of 10. Um, Intelligence, 8 out of 10. Emotional intelligence, 8 out of 10. Funny, extremely. He cracks me up every single episode. Like, he's my favorite. He just makes me laugh all the time. Not super duper relatable, and worldviews, 4 out of 10. He loses points for being a cop, but good God, is he cute. Um, I, I stand by this point right here. He is the most amusing character in the whole show to me, and I love his commitment to food. You are extremely valid. He is super funny. Yeah, right? 
Oh, and I love. I was kind of surprised when he, he popped up and it had a green check mark, just because he is a cop. Yeah, not very many cops get the green check mark, but for Aubrey, I'd pretend that he wasn't a cop. I, he's just so cute, and he doesn't. He doesn't seem to act like a cop in his relationships. He's very vulnerable and very open, and and yeah, I like that. Uh, Clark, um, seven out of ten. Oh, Clark is a yes. Seven out of ten. Intelligence, nine out of ten. Uh, emotional intelligence, nine out of ten. I don't think he makes me laugh very much. I don't think that he's like his jokes don't annoy me. I think they just don't. Meh. He's kind of meh. Um, relatable, also meh. Not really, but, you know, not zero. Six out of ten. Similar worldviews, six out of ten. I think he is, and this is, like, one of the biggest Clark selling points, an extremely solid, consistent, and selfless partner. I mean, that relationship he had with Nora was, like, forever long, and he just was very much, like, in love with her and committed, and it was a perfect relationship. Also, Nora was fantastic. I should have included her on this. She's not in here because I forgot her, but damn, she's hot. Um, <laughs> uh, he's maybe a little too harsh with boundaries, but overall, I'm kind of on his side with it. Um, I think he could present it better, but they're valid boundaries to have. <laughs> All right, Vincent. He's really cute, but no. Um, yeah, he's very attractive. I think he's extremely intelligent. His emotional intelligence is shit. 4 out of 10. Funny, 8 out of 10. He's pretty funny. He makes me laugh a lot. Um, and kind of the way that he talks, I find to be pretty relatable. Um, similar worldviews. I put him at 4 out of 10. Um, adorable, cute, lovely. But he gets the no for his misogynistic behavior. Alcohol is not to blame for telling people that you slept with not one, but both of your bosses. The alcohol uncovered the misogyny. <laughs> but... Um, he's pretty gross for all of that. Pew! Wendell. God, yes! 10 out of 10 attractive, 10 out of 10 intelligent, 9 out of 10 emotional intelligence. Um, 5 out of 10 funny. He doesn't really make me laugh very much, but, you know, it's alright. Um, I think he's pretty relatable. I like where he comes from. I like that a lot. Uh, similar role views seems to also kind of align, I think. Um, I really like him in just almost every way. Um, the emotional intelligence is docked by only a single point for that brutal honesty episode. Um, it pissed me off. It was extremely annoying. One episode. I remembered that episode and he lost a point for it. <laughs> but it's not very much. Um, he takes breakups like a champ when Angela broke up with him. He just, he handled it, man. Absolutely handled it. Fisher. Yeah, he's lovely. Oh my god, is he. So cute. Fisher. Uh, Fisher overall gets a no. I think mostly this is um, really just about like vibes and like attractiveness. I do like him a lot. Um, five out of ten attractiveness in this photo, but at like the very last time we see Fisher, he's got like a much shorter haircut, which is kind of just like the type of haircut that I really like. Um, and he he walked in in this suit and that haircut, and I was like, oh my god, I have to adjust his number. Like, <laughs> so I was already making this um, presentation, and then we had rewatched that episode, and I was like, good god, is he hot? Um, so I, yeah, definitely way more attractive in that episode. Um, obviously, he's extremely intelligent. I think his emotional intelligence is pretty good. Um, but I don't find him funny. I don't find him relatable. And his worldviews kind of being wrapped up in the doom and gloom. I just, yeah, I think it would be annoying. Uh, he handles himself well, but we could use a few less all is woe comments. Um, I'm fascinated by his bone remodeling expertise. Like, that was a thing that they talked about him a lot, that, like, he was working on and or had published papers on bone remodeling, and I just think that's fascinating. And I like that that continued to be, like, his expertise and that they remembered that throughout the show. Aristu. Big yes. Good God, big yes. I love him. Uh, 10 out of 10. Uh, intelligence 8 out of 10 emotional intelligence 7 out of 10 um, he loses some points there for how he left Cam over the Jeffersonian job that's that's bullshit um, also yeah the original fake accent was a little weird I get why he did it but like don't do that just you know be honest I don't know uh, anyway uh, funny not really but I still like him a lot uh, relatable 6 out of 10 meh uh, similar worldviews, uh, from what we see, yeah, I think so, 8 out of 10. Oh my god, does this man look sexy as fuck in a suit. And they know that, 
And they give you multiple opportunities to see him in a suit throughout the show. And I, I love them for that. <laughs> uh, Daisy, big yes. I love her. Um, I think Cute. She, right? Like, I think she's pretty attractive. I think mostly I love her personality. Um, intelligence, 8 out of 10. Emotional, <clears throat> emotional intelligence, 6 out of 10. Uh, funny, she, she makes me laugh sometimes, but, you know, 6 out of 10. Um, I find her very relatable. Um, the points in which I don't find her relatable are the I must have sex everywhere and in public thing. Um, I think I could do without that. But anyway, uh, obviously... Uh, she's pretty annoying at first, but it's not damning, and she does get a ton better as she gets older. Um, she does kind of take just the harsher version of Brennan's worldviews, and I don't like that sometimes, so similar worldviews is uh, 6 out of 10 for her. But overall, I'd still date her. Finn. Yes. Finn, uh, I do find him very attractive, um, and but not like early Finn, so as I've previously mentioned, I'm into shorter hair for the most part. Um, intelligence, 9 out of 10. Um, obviously, he's super smart. His emotional intelligence, I think, is also pretty damn good. I think he's, I mean, kind of pretty much right out of the gate. I think he's up there. Um, funny, you know, sure. Relatable, sure. Uh, similar worldviews, sure. Good dude. Takes breakups like a champ. Uh, when Michelle broke up with him, he, yeah, I mean, he just, he handled it. He took it. He cried. And, you know, but he wasn't vindictive or anything like that and he just he just dealt with it um and i love that when his girlfriend was upset he just said no like if you're upset everything stops i like that very memorable line good dude uh oliver good god no (laughs) i just cat shaking her head good fucking god no she's just still shaking her head smiling um he's not attractive (laughs) he's the worst he's absolutely horrible attractive four out of ten uh intelligence 10 out of 10. Sure. Emotional intelligence, 0 out of 10. Funny, 0 out of 10. Relatable, 0 out of 10. Similar worldviews, I hate him out of 10. Uh, Petulant child, I hate him. Why have they not fired him yet? And that's, I think that's all I have to say about Oliver. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. Fuentes. I originally gave him a no because of that first scene where he tells Brennan, point blank, I think we will make love soon. I hated that, but I changed it to a check mark when he stood up to Hodgins and gave Hodgins shit for treating Angela like shit and just was just immovable about it. And Hodgins was like, what are you challenging me? Kind of vibes. And Fuentes was like, yes, I am because you're being a piece of shit. 10 out of 10. Um, attractive, obviously, Jesus Christ. Inte- intelligent, emotionally intelligent, both. Yes. Uh, funny. Meh. Not really, but whatever. Um, relatable. Meh. Uh, similar worldviews, 9 out of 10. Um, I, you know, I mean, there's only so much that we see in shows, but, like, he had a, a debate about something that's escaping me now, but, like, I, yeah, I, I think there's not very many characters that I put in here with uh, similar worldviews that high. 9 out of 10. Fuentes is yes. Jessica Warren. Yes. Yes. Uh, 10 out of 10 attractive. Intelligence, 8 8 out of 10. Emotional intelligence, 10 out of 10. I love the way she approaches everything. I can't can't think of a single thing that I would dock her. Like, she is wonderful. Name one thing wrong with her. I love her confidence. I can't. I I also adore her. (laughs) Really? I can't think of a single thing that she doesn't just have, like, this, like, great clarity on. Um... Even like she's a very lovely character, right? Like she's fantastic. There's that time that Angela comes up to her and says, "You got to stop getting Brennan on this Twitter thing because it's a distraction and it's not her." And Warren like doesn't argue with it. She just is like, "Oh, I thought we were having fun." And then Angela's like, "No more." And she's like, Meh, "Just shrugs and stops." And like that's it. She just rolled right off her back. Didn't care. I'd have been annoyed if somebody came up and was nosy like that. I would have been annoyed at Angela. But Jessica just meh. <laughs> uh, funny, yes, 9 out of 10. Relatable, 7 out of 10. Similar worldviews, 8 out of 10. Agent Sully. No. No. Uh, I don't think he's very attractive. I think he's much more attractive when he comes back later in the show for that one episode. But um, uh, this Sully has this really strange center part and this 
the back of anyway i'm not trying to like dig into why i don't think he's attractive i don't know i just like it's the haircut it just doesn't jive with me hair does a lot for me it doesn't suit his face shape it does not it really doesn't his haircut later fucking fantastic (laughs) great this one no this one no intelligence yeah he's very intelligent um and i think he's pretty emotionally intelligent as well um which is also why like brennan leans on him later in the show um funny eight out of ten yeah he made me laugh a lot um relatable not at all similar worldviews surprisingly for a cop eight out of ten um but he was too pushy towards brennan i think and i didn't like that wasn't very much for me um i do like the i want you to ogle my butt crack scene um where he was inviting Brennan to play more than just because that's funny, but also he was vi- inviting Brennan to watch him play basketball. And she was like, what's the point? And he was like, I want you to ogle my butt crack. And he just kind of like explained it in a very like direct way. And he was very good at communicating with Brennan. And I really like that about him. Um, Agent Parada. No, she's a cop. Good God, is she a cop? It's not just because she's a cop on paper. It's because she is a cop. Uh, 7 out of 10. She's pretty hot, but nothing like super crazy to me, I think. Um, intelligence, yeah. Decent. Emotionally intelligent. Sure, fine. Funny, no. Relatable, hell no. Similar worldviews, hell no. She's just a cop. Uh, hacker. He's another cop that gets a yes. I love him. <laughs> I think physically I'm not like that attracted to him, but like I love him in like a mentally like romantic, like I love his personality. Um, yeah, intelligence, seven out of 10. Emotional intelligence, I think, yeah, 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10, funny. He makes me laugh so much. Uh, relatable, six out of 10. Similar worldviews, four out of 10. Uh, discount Vince Vaughn, and I mean that as a compliment. Um, a- adaptable communicator, which I really appreciate. Agent Shaw, the other cop that gets... The other cop, I'm now at like three or four. Who gets a yes? Um, attractive, 10 out of 10. Intelligence, 10... Or 8 out of 10, excuse me. Emotional intelligence, 9 out of 10. Funny, 6 out of 10. Relatable, 8 out of 10. Similar worldviews, 6 out of 10. I appreciate that she keeps her private life private, but is like willing to share at relevant times. Um, so she's somehow got that down. She's not like oversharing or, or undersharing. Um, I wish she was in more episodes. I really did. She should have just been in the whole show. That would have been great. Um, Karen. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, Blake says that Karen is the literal embodiment of every, like, listable ADHD symptom. Um, and I think that maybe just checks out. I don't know. I really like Karen a lot. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I like... No, that's valid. That's, I mean, that's absolutely valid. Right. <laughs> Um, attractive, 8 out of 10. Intelligence, 7 out of 10. Emotional intelligence, 8 out of 10. Um, I think she's funny too. She makes me laugh, 8 out of 10. Relatable, 7 out of 10. Yeah, I like her a lot. Uh, similar worldviews, 6 out of 10. Oh, the chaos. I wouldn't get bored with her. That's for sure. Wouldn't happen. I love her. Russ Brennan, no. He's whiny as shit. I don't even have to read those. 6 out of 10, 5 out of 10, 4 out of 10, 5 out of 10, 3 out of 10, 3 out of 10. He's whiny, he's dramatic. If he was a great dad, he would accept help for his daughter's health in any legal way and not be so fucking prideful. Brennan offered him money. Brennan's like, I can help your daughter's health needs. He should have taken that. Anyway. Okay. Jared Booth. No. But God, is he hot. I like him better when he has longer hair, which is namely just in other shows. Um, that are not this one, but still, I like him a lot. Um, intelligence, 7 out of 10. Emotional intelligence, 6 out of 10. Funny, meh. Relatable, meh. Similar worldviews, meh. His best era is when he goes to India and meets Padme, and he's awful before, um, and the Jared described to us after his death was awful. I wish that they had let him have that happy life with Padme and just leave it at that and not fucking ruined it. I wouldn't have thought of Jared again if they had let him be happy with Padme. But no, they had to fucking divorce them and kill him off. Um, but still a no, just because he's... I'm not, I, w- I wouldn't have been prepared for pre-Padme Jared and even post-Padme Jared. I don't know. Michelle Welton. Uh, 10 out of 10. 6 out of 10. Intelligence. She's pretty intelligent. Pretty smart. Um, I think she's actually decently emotionally intelligent. I love it when she turns everything back around on Cam, which happens a surprising amount of times. Um, she is funny. 
Uh, funny enough, I think nothing super crazy. Uh, relatable enough. Similar worldviews. I, you know, have to kind of guess with her. Just a meh. She delivers breakups well. That's also really hard. Um, she fell out of love with Finn, and she had to break up with him, and she did it respectfully and well. Good for her. But yeah, I would date her. Uh, serial killers disclaimer, because we're about to get into them. <laughs> My decisions on serial killers are being made with the assumption that I don't know that they're a serial killer. This is based on their personality and how they act, given that I'm not aware that they're killing people. I don't know this. <laughs> okay, let's do it really fast. <sighs> Howard Epps, hell no. I actually do kind of think he is decently attractive. Um, for whatever reason, I'm not really sure why. Um... His intelligence is not near as much as he thinks it is. Uh, he's not emotionally intelligent, hardly at all. He's not funny at all. He's not relatable. And similar worldviews seem like dirt. He's real fucking creepy and weird. Uh, nothing redeemable. Even when he's lying and trying to pretend like he's decent, it's just he's not good at it. Ca Caroline Epps is stupid. She's stupid. I cannot believe she fell for that. He's not believable. No, he's he's just no. He's not good. Okay, Heather Taffet. Also fucking no. Um, I don't find her attractive at all. She's pretty smart. And she's unfortunately very emotionally intelligent as well. Not funny in any way. Not relatable in any way. No similar worldviews. There's nothing wrong with having resting bitch face. I know that's not her fault. But because she's actually a bitch, she is getting docked points for having resting bitch face. Um, she can represent her court or herself in court, and I think that that's really cool. Otherwise, fucking no. You no. Uh, you should not represent yourself in court. She does it well. She's one of the few. Yeah, in, yeah, in the real world, not. do not represent yourself in court. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Definitely don't do that. Um, Gormagon. Now that I think about it, this slide is actually kind of incorrect. I have included a picture of one Gormagon. And I comment on a different Gormagon. I forgot. I knew there was something else with this slide, uh, this presentation that I needed to change. But we're here, so we're going to go with it. Um, this guy is a 0 out of 10. The guy in the motorcycle outfit is a 10 out of 10. I, I don't have to know what he looks like. Anybody who's on a motorcycle with their motorcycle gear, with helmets, it's a fact. They're hot. I don't make the rules. It's just I how can't it is. argue with that. Right? That's how it is. That's just the way that life is. Um, You're correct, and you should say <laughs> Thank you. This guy, Gormagon, either one, pick it, apprentice or master, doesn't matter. Um, decently intelligent, but really not even all that intelligent. Um, obviously the emotional intelligence of a peanut uh, angry at the world for not seeing them. Please, Jesus Christ, just just get a friend. Just go, just go meet somebody. Just go to the grocery store. Um, funny, zero out of ten. No. Relatable, God, no. Not similar worldviews, but I, I, he, they got some points because we agree that a lobbyist is a corrupter. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Jacob Brodsky. No. Uh, this is discount Nicolas Cage, and I do not mean that as a compliment. Uh, he is not the right hand of God. Sit the fuck down. Um, not attractive. Decently intelligent, I guess. His emotional intelligence is pretty decent. I mean, he stays pretty solid and calm, but not funny, no. Not relatable, no. Similar worldviews, no. No, 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 no. Pallant, the first serial killer to get a yes. Look at this man. He is the cutest serial killer to ever exist. He's emotionally stunted, but I just want him to be normal and find someone to love who's not already in a committed relationship. If he wants, it can be me. He can love me. I'm okay with this. Uh, attractive, 10 out of 10. Intelligence, wow, 10 out of 10. Um, obviously, he's not emotionally intelligent. He's stunted there. Um, I think he's okay. He's kind of funny. Okay, funny. Um, kind of relatable. I kind of get him. Minus the serial killer part, but you know, the rest of his personality. Sorry, can't give me a look. Um, similar worldviews, 7 out of 10. Stephanie McNamara is a no. I don't think she's attractive. I don't think she's intelligent. I don't think she has any emotional intelligence at all, any whatsoever. She's not funny. She's not relatable. No similar worldviews. The only reason she didn't get caught is because she's con inconsistent and rich. So it's literally because she's stupid, has no sense of, like, direction, and also is rich. That's how she got away with it for so long. I, I genuinely feel bad about what happened to her in her childhood. Her dad can just die and burn rotten hell, all of that shit. But Stephanie McNamara is still a no. Sorry. Your trauma is not an excuse to harm other people. Right? It's 
just not. Roger Flender uh, gets a yes. Again, this is based on the fact that I don't know that he's a serial killer. He had me convinced. I was watching this, re-watching this with Blake, and so I should have known that Roger Flender was the killer, and I did not still, because he convinced me yet again, because he just seemed like a genuinely good fucking dude that wanted to genuinely just help people um, kind of, like, get back on their feet after being released from prison, and I think that's great. I think that's fantastic, but he's closet religious, batshit. Oh my god, he tricked me so hard. Um, but he gets a yes because clearly I can be successfully tricked by him. Um, I think he's decently attractive, um, decently intelligent, decent emotional intelligence. Not like super funny, but I don't know. I think something about his, his vibe makes me, he kind of, I, I also think he's attractive, but I also think he looks funny. I don't know if that makes sense to say, but that's kind of how I feel. Relatable-ish, similar worldviews, sure. Puppeteer is a no. I, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't find him particularly attractive. Um, obviously, he's very intelligent, but his emotional intelligence is shit. He's not funny at all. Um, he's not relatable at all. Similar worldviews, eh. So, as a psychologist, I feel like he should be more self-aware. If he's experiencing memory loss, he should know to seek help. Like, you know when you're experiencing memory loss, when you lose entire chunks of your day. You may not know what happened in that gap, but, like, I feel like he should have known that this was going on um and not framed his patient uh but yeah i think just kind of even from not knowing that part it's i don't know just not like particularly attracted to him um mark kovac god is this man a snack um he he yep he would have fooled me he would have told me my father was a monster and I would have believed him and not thought that he loved it. I mean, I would have, well, I would have known that he loved his dad because he's his dad, but you know what I mean, right? Like I would have just thought he was like a good dude, not a crazy psychopath. Not that being psychopath is crazy. I'm putting both labels on this guy. Mark Kovac is attractive as hell. He's intelligent as hell. He's emotionally intelligent pretty well too. He's not really funny that we see, but eh, kind of relatable. I don't know about worldviews. This man is a snack. He would fool me, and I would be happy with him all up until the day that I learned he was a serial killer. Hannah Burley is a god yes in every way. Kat, do you have thoughts on Hannah Burley? Um... I'm going to be honest, I don't particularly remember her, but it also has been a very long time since I've watched Burton's. She was a uh, Booth's girlfriend that he proposed to after oh, she told oh. him she didn't want to get married and he proposed anyways. Yes, I do remember her now. I yeah, she's her. hot. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Um, um, intelligence, 9 out of 10. Uh, emotional intelligence, 8 out of 10. Funny, 10 out of 10. Relatable, 10 out of 10. Uh, similar worldviews, 8 out of 10. So she gets some point stocks for dating a cop, but, but for like the rest of like her worldviews, I love her take on stuff that we get to see at least. Um, she got shot doing a story to out corrupt cops. Like, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, her, her worldviews are pretty solid. It's a little surprising that she's dating a cop at any point, but you know, here we are. Um, I would date her. Uh, Dr. Lidner is a no. He is a cold fish. He's boring. <laughs> He's mildly attractive, but nothing crazy. He's intelligent, sure. His emotional intelligence is dirt. If you want to ask a girl on a date, just fucking do it and then go on the goddamn date. Oh my god. Just fucking go on the date. Okay, funny? No. Relatable? No. Similar worldviews? Probably not. He's wishy-washy. Too little too late by the time he fucking committed. He's just too dramatic. I don't have time for him. Rebecca Stinson is also a no. She is a vindictive piece of shit. She doesn't have to threaten Booth with not seeing his kid. It's just not related, not appropriate, not necessary. She just does it because she's a piece of shit. She's mildly attractive, but again, nothing to write home about. Big no for her. She's not even funny. Nothing. No. Amy Morton. Yes. Amy Morton. Yes. Attractive. 10 out of 10. Oh my god. I mean, we all know her. She's also from Twilight. She's attractive. She is intelligent. She's emotionally intelligent. She's 
be funny. I mean, probably is fun. I don't know. Whatever. Um, relatable, yeah. Similar worldviews, absolutely. I like her worldviews that we get to see. Uh, I wish Howard Epps hadn't had so much of an effect on her, and I feel bad for her. Um, she does seem to be naive, not just because she's ide idealistic, but specifically naive. Um, she gives off that vibe, which is unfortunate. I'd still date her. Um, I legitimately did not know that she was in Twilight. She's the she's the villain. Yeah, she's Victoria. Yep. I had no idea. That's her. I in, yeah. In one she episode looks, of Bones. <laughs> yeah, I've watched. I've I've seen all the Bones, and I fucking love. I fucking for some reason love Twilight. I know way too much about Twilight. Did not realize that was Victoria. <laughs> yep. I think she's the only overlap that I know of. Jesus. Okay. Continue. Grace and Barasa. No. No. He's attractive. Sure. Probably have similar worldviews. He's a hoe. I don't think he's emotionally unintelligent when he's going back and forth between Angela and Cam. I think he's doing it on purpose because he's a fucking dick. Ian Wexler. Yes. 10 out of 10 attractive. 10 out of 10 intelligent. 9 out of 10 emotional intelligence. He's very funny. He's very relatable. I love his worldviews. I appreciate his directness about what he's looking for and his respect that he gives when he's receiving a no. Uh, just no complaints. I love this man. And he lived a really fun life. Um, he was on a rowing team. Cool dude, man. Cool dude. Yes. Kate Pritchard, also yes. Uh, 8 out of 10. Intelligence, 9 out of 10. Emotional intelligence, 10 out of 10, which is a rare uh, a rare rating on this uh, PowerPoint. Uh, she's pretty funny. I think she's relatable. Uh, look at me through her worldviews. Uh, she's too serious for me, I think, but I'd give it a shot. Um, she's a cop. So there's that but she's pretty open about discussing sex, and I like that. Uh, Agent Sparling. Really, at the end of the day, no. I wanted to find a way to say yes, but I just couldn't um, because she's a hoe. Um, yeah, at, just she loses points for being a cop. She loses points for kissing a guy she knows is dating someone else, deliberately. He stops her and says, I have a girlfriend, and she says, I know when someone is taken. Which is why I'm doing this. And kisses him anyways. What? What? No. I would not date her. I almost said yes because she's hot. But no, I wouldn't date her. Uh, Aldo Clemens, no. I don't really find him attractive. Um, I like his emotional intelligence. Um, his views on God are really cool. He's like, I believe in God and I hate him. <laughs> I just, that's an interesting stance and I just, I like it. It's fun to watch and... Um, please pay for drinks. He's not your therapist. Uh, but like, yeah, I don't know. I like him. I just not attracted to him. Wouldn't date him. Uh, Danny Beck. Yes. Yes. Probably this is really because he's hot. Um, the whole CIA agent thing. They don't run around with guns. I'm going to save that rant for some other time. Um, he's a little whiny, but he's cute. This is just Freddie Prince Jr. Um, <laughs> But he's cute. <laughs> cute. Avalon. I've just like stopped reading the, the things. Y'all can read them. Avalon is a no. I just think she's great. I would love to be her friend. But she's a no. I think she's kind of pushy. And I, yeah, like I just, I don't think it would be good. She like deeply, fully believes in um, her being a psychic. And I, I would hope that I would be way the hell more respectful to her than half the characters in the show are about that like it's so easy to not also believe in what she believes in and yet still participate in tarot card readings because they're fun and then also just not give her shit all the time and just listen to her if you don't want to like like take what she's saying to heart and apply it to your work you don't have to but it doesn't hurt to listen to her everybody's just so mean to her and I hate that um, I would love to be her friend not really attracted to her. Padme Delage? Yes. This is uh, Jared Booth's ex-wife. I think she's great. Um, the beginning of her storyline is absolute fantastic. Um, later, meh. Um, her honesty and her relationship with Jared is really lovely. She does lose points for marrying basically a cop. And then loses points for whatever the hell happened to her personality later after her and Jared. But again, I just didn't like any of that part of the story. That could have all been cut out. Um, and finally, we have 
uh, Dr. Goodman. Um, he is attractive, but, you know, he's very intelligent. His emotional intelligence is okay. Not really similar worldviews. I'd be happy to have him as a boss, but, like, he's just too family-oriented. Um, <laughs> I, I feel like whoever he's dating is going to be the person that, quote, brings him children, and that is not... That's Did not say that? No, but I feel like he would. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, he just Valid. gives me those vibes. So, yeah, not really interested in that. Um, characters that I would date. Dr. Brennan, Angela Hodge and Sweets, Zach, Aubrey, Clark, Wendell, Aristu, Daisy, Finn, Fuentes, Jessica, Hacker, Agent Shaw, Karen, Michelle Welton, Pallant, Roger Flender, Hannah Burley, Amy Morton, Ian Wexler, Kate Pritchard, Danny Beck, and Padme Delage. And characters I would not date. Booth, Cam, Vincent, Oliver, God, no, not Oliver. Agent Sully, Agent Parada, Russ Brennan, Jared Booth, Howard Epps, Heather Taffy, Gormagon, Jacob Brodsky, Stephanie McNamara, Puppeteer, Dr. Lidner, Rebecca Stinson, Grace Barasa, Agent Sparling, Aldo Clemens, and uh, Avalon and Goodman. And that, in summation, is uh, all of the Bones characters. And would I date them, or would I not? Uh, thank you, Kat, for being guest on yet another presentation this one was significantly longer than the last one thank um, you for having me i uh, i don't have very mi- i don't have any like hard opinions about your uh about your choices here <laughs> <laughs> who who would be your top character um probably hodgins he was my favorite like throughout the entire series except for like that one instance uh yeah. with angela and i was like this man can go fuck himself um but i really really loved him like all throughout the series yeah he is fantastic um so that's all for this one stay tuned for our next presentation um we have a couple in the works i think i will not announce either of them yet uh just so that we see which one's actually gonna come to fruition first so i we she means she i have no idea what's happening you're I'm participating just the ride. in one of them and you know it <laughs> oh (laughs) oh yeah yeah that one was kind of my fault yeah that was your fault we have a couple in the works and one of them is one of them is a group presentation so we'll have a lot more people here for that um with that thank you again everyone for watching thank you cat for joining me goodbye